Hello, Brain Shakers. Welcome to today's episode where we continue looking at a bridge presentation. And in this scenario, or rather this particular episode, we're going to be looking at what to do when you have uh, extended legs, when you have extended arms, and you have an extended head as well, meaning that we'll be looking at the maneuvers that you can put in place to help that bridge to successively deliver and culminate into a non-assisted bridge delivery. So we already have our uh, little man here that is obviously going to be in a bridge uh, presentation and we have looked at a number of uh, bridge um, types and uh, positions as well and if you haven't seen that video please head on to the YouTube channel which is the Brain Shakers Academy and you can see and find all those readily available. So what we're going to have here is that obviously you have the Frank bridge so this is where you have these legs here flexed around the hip joint but then they are extended around the popliteal fossa or the knee so you have that flexion and these are extended like that so little one's legs are up like that and then what this means then is that that may force the hands as well to then be extended and lie sidewards to the head or they may drop backwards like that and then you have the head in the front like that and then the head of the fetus then will not have any time in flexing why because there are legs in the way and that may push the head as well so you end up having an extended head as well so you have an extended uh, lower limbs then you have extended arms and you have an extended head as well now what are you going to do when you are faced with uh, such a case so that is very easy we are going to have the um, right sacro anterior as a way of a position that we're going to use for this particular session so you have your pelvis there and then you have this coming in through the right sacro anterior and if it is coming through the right sacro anterior then it has made all those movements the mechanism of a bridge uh, presentation or a bridge a bit i have done a separate video on that so you can definitely look at that as well so when you find that it comes around on this end meaning that it has distended the perineum here and then the legs do not deliver on their own then it means that the legs could be extended legs and then you have to employ your maneuver to go ahead and then deliver the legs so before you even go ahead to do that because those will be more or less internal maneuvers you may evaluate on whether you need to actually perform an episiotomy there so that you broaden the way or you may not need an episiotomy if you don't need an episiotomy then well and good go ahead and deliver those legs but if you need it you're better off having it okay so once that then has happened what you're going to do is you will follow the legs that is we're starting with the anterior so you follow the legs here and as you're following you're going all the way to the popliteal fossa right behind the knee there and as you do that you'll be applying digital pressure onto the popliteal fossa. Applying digital pressure onto the popliteal fossa is then going to help flex that leg. So meaning that you have to use your other finger now to actually grab that fetal limb like that and then that is going to then facilitate the delivery of that leg. So you have applied digital pressure into the popliteal fossa that then flexes that and then you go ahead and deliver that. And so you would do the same as well. Let me just keep this one off the way. So you would do the same as well. Follow that leg down into the popliteal fossa here. Apply digital pressure on that end. That is going to force that little guy there to then flex. Then you use your other finger now to grasp that leg and then go ahead and deliver and then it means that the legs would have been delivered now that maneuver is a maneuver that we call the pinards maneuver it is a maneuver that is used to deliver extended legs 
okay so from there all the mechanisms all the movements and the steps are going to obviously happen and then you get to a stage where now you have the shoulders right there and you can see the scapula blades there and then the arms are not delivering on their own if the arms are not delivering on their own it means that they are obviously extended arms and you need to go ahead and deliver so what you're going to do now to deliver these arms you will need to obviously go around the shoulder to try and then deliver and see if you can actually sweep the arms on the chest and then deliver the arms that's the first thing that you're obviously going to do if you apply your hand there and then see if you can get through to the anticubital fossa which is the ford for your elbow there and then sweep in front of the baby's chest then you would be doing that to actually help that deliver but then if their hands are folded all the way and they are extended going all the way to the back of the fetal head here then that may not be successful and it may be traumatic for the fetus because you may then go ahead and cause a brachial plexus injury that will culminate into a clump kiss palsy or an Ebbs palsy and that's the least thing that you would want to cause on the baby. So if that then happens and you're unable to sweep the arms right in front of the chest of the baby, what you then employ is a maneuver that we call the love set maneuver. Now, the love set maneuver means that you will have to rotate this uh, baby while it's holding on the pelvic gator here. So if you're holding on the pelvic gator here, then you will be rotating this baby, meaning that what is the posterior arm here will have to come into the anterior aspect and what is in the anterior aspect will have to go into the posterior aspect. So meaning that as you hold on this end here, so if I turn this little one like that and then you have that. So I'm using one hand here, but what you will need is basically two hands and you're applying the thumb on the back aspect here. You're not holding on the abdomen because that will be traumatic to the fetus and then all you do is right around the pelvic ghetto the bony part here you have your hand on this end and the other hand also on this end you then try and rotate this baby like that and when you do that that means that what was the posterior now becomes the anterior and what was anterior now becomes the posterior then you can go ahead again follow it through over the shoulder see if you can actually get through to the anticubital force to then sweep that arm through the chest and then deliver it. In most cases, when you just do that rotation with some bit of downward traction, the arm itself, during just that rotation, is going to force the arm to actually fall on itself, then reducing that by sacromium diameter there. And then you find that as you rotate back the fetus in the other anticlockwise direction, then it is going to deliver the other arm. If that doesn't happen, then you have to go ahead push your fingers on top of the shoulder, get to the anticubital fossa there, and then you will sweep that arm in front of baby or through the chest and then deliver that arm. It means that what was the posterior now came into the anterior and has been successfully delivered. And once you have delivered that, if you're not able to go through the posterior aspect to actually sweep and allow that arm to deliver, then we will have to rotate this baby again back take that up anterior um, arm into the posterior aspect and then bring the other one on the anterior aspect meaning again we will have to obviously go in through or over the shoulder get to the anticubital fossa and then you will then facilitate the delivery of that uh, shoulder or the delivery of that arm so over the shoulder right into the anticubital fossa and then you force that little hand to then come
and then deliver. So it means that you would have delivered the hands. And once you've delivered the hands, remember, we're keeping the back uppermost, meaning that, again, we're holding in the pelvic ghetto here and then making sure that we bring the back uppermost like that. And once that has happened, then we'll be waiting for that head to obviously spontaneously deliver. And if it doesn't spontaneously deliver, then we mean to bring about another maneuver that we're going to call the Mauricio Smellivate maneuver. Now, the Mauricio Smellivate maneuver, allow me to just take it off so that I can demonstrate and show it clearly to you. What you are obviously going to be targeting here is the bony part. You have malar bones here, closer to the zygomatic bones, the malar bones here, and then you have the mouth on the other end. So what you're going to be doing is the hand that then goes down in the posterior aspect will aim to actually hold a little one like that. Meaning that you're holding on not just the soft tissues here, but you're holding on the harder aspects so that when you do this, you hold this end and then the other hand on the upper part is going to then be applying digital pressure on the occiput to then help flex the head. Because the flexing of the head is going to facilitate the smaller diameters, which is the suboccipital pragmatic, the 9.5 centimeters diameter, to then be the one that will then distend the perineum, and then this baby is obviously going to be born. So that is how you're going to be doing your smelly vet um, maneuver, your Mauricio smelly vet maneuver. So you go in and then hold on the other end, and this other hand is going to apply digital pressure there and go ahead and deliver. Sometimes you may find it a little bit handy to have an assistant or somebody to help you apply slight suprapubic pressure that is just right on top of the synthesis pubis there just to maintain the flexion and not uh, allow this head to obviously extend like that because if you are gloved and this baby is, has got a lot of venic scarsiosa then it means that it is going to be slippery and if you lose that then it means that you lose the flexion as well so slight suprapubic pressure as well is going to be helpful in facilitating that delivery so if we do take the um that pito head uh, back okay so if i do that and turn a little one like that so what we're going to be doing now is that if i have a towel on my hand and then i can actually suspend or apply ventral suspension there so what i'm going to do is i'm following the malar bones right in there following the malar bones in there so holding those malar bones here, some people apply a third finger in the mouth here to help that deliver. So you can still apply just a pressure onto the malar bones here. And then the other finger here is going to be applying digital pressure on this end. That is going to then cause the flexion of this head and allow the delivery of that uh, fetal head, meaning that now the sensiport, the uh, nostrils and the momentum will then be allowed to sweep the perineum and then you deliver that little one straight onto the mother's abdomen. So that is how you would then be delivering that extended uh, bridge uh, presentation. So you have the pinets maneuver for the extended legs, you have the love set maneuver for extended arms and you have the Mauricio smellivate as well for the extended uh, head. So you also have other maneuvers that you can obviously employ. There's another maneuver that is called the Benz Marshall. The Benz Marshall maneuver is just where once the head is almost in delivery, uh, being delivered, then you would be holding the uh, fetal legs that is away from the mother's body and then just deliver that little one onto the mother's abdomen. So basically, that is how you would be employing your maneuvers. And those are some of the maneuvers, the commonest maneuvers that you obviously be able to put in place. In most cases, you find that the legs deliver on their own, the arms deliver on their own, and then you just need to employ the Mauritius Melivet just to deliver the head. Some of the times, you may need to employ all of them. So it is cutting out that you know all of them. Now, if you found this particular video a helpful, and insightful in understanding what maneuvers to actually put in place when you are conducting a bridge delivery then don't hesitate to give it like so drop me comments in the comment section i'd like to hear what you have to say and as always thank you so much for watching don't forget to head on to the youtube channel subscribe hit the notification button so you don't miss any of the amazing stuff and as always i will see you in the next one